We are going to take a second set of questions, yeah? Okay? And I think we need perhaps to remove the idea that this has to happen with you now and maybe find another opportunity because when you do that, these other fingers are looking at you. I need the diaspora organizer on exports, trade, standards, the things I spoke about. So first of all, I just want you to be hopeful because my generation is in this audience. So when I look at Nsuvuga, in the Shebu. Uh -huh. <laughs> one for Katanga. Uh -huh. one. Hev, hev. Hev, hev, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> we, we were at University Hall together 20 something years ago. You see Wakuma Richard there? Yeah. There he wanted to speak. He will speak. You see God by there? Uh -huh. You see Moses. Moses Biarang, I think, was one year ahead of. Yeah, Biarang. in Livingstone. Before Blake, I come here open the site and speak. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the, here is the point I'm trying to make. When you look at that generation and this generation, uh, I have a lot of hope because um, this, the conversations they have are not our conversations. Not at least for me. I remember where I'm coming from. So these, these ones are talking about standards, certification, markets, and they're, they're still in their 30s, early 30s late 20s. Eh? It means that if we can hold on to them and really grow them, these businesses will learn how to partner with global businesses and we have companies that make sense at the global level. Now if you give them the necessary legal technical infrastructure at home uh, with young people, so when you talk about TFF, I'm thinking of this, this Alan Agaba who is also young, who worked with JP Morgan. I never worked with JP Morgan. I don't know what, uh, I never had career guidance. Don't let us down uh, in just wasting time. It makes a lot of sense that you are the ones who are now speaking about the language. The president often speaks alone or a few people who pick this up. Let me start with my sister, Grace. Justine. Huh? Justine. Justine, what did I write, Grace? I'm so sorry. Uh, the, so, so let me just, I don't want to talk about politics, but let me tell you why I think what's going on is going on, because I speak honestly. Anything that grows and expands and takes time will be diluted. So because I was a young boy watching these guys in green gumboots marching in 87, imagine marching, doing a parade for a visiting head of state with gumboots. I saw district commissioners uh, with a pickup, with gumboots, going in villages and insisting on a particular way we were going to organize society. They had more credibility at that time than the leaders will often have today. Why? It's just like Christianity. So Christianity began in the West. 81% uh, in 1900. Christians were in the West, Northwest. Today they are 28%, in Africa they are 70%. <coughs> but in Africa where there's many Christians called evangelicals and other groups, sometimes, because now it has become a fad, people set up churches very quickly and you hear someone is using a, an electric gadget to make people fall down. Anything that expands gets diluted. How does something get diluted? When you lose teaching. When you lose the conversation that is genuine. I, I have shared these things with our leadership. We have to ensure that we restore training of leaders before they become opposition holders. Because a leader is a leader before they become a leader. You don't have to fight for the chair. No, 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 no. Causes and ideas are much stronger <laughs> than other things. But we should help our people to come into leadership with better preparation. That's why someone will take away an investor to another place, yet you're working in one office. What is their objective and aim? They didn't, they just got the job, but they didn't have the heart. They didn't know uh, what to do. How do you deal with the uh, with the, the farmer. See, the price 
incentive to a farmer is based on many people in the ecosystem. When I was starting this conversation today, I told you eight steps. Who pays for those eight steps? It's the final consumer. Now that final consumer, you have to incentivize him to go back to the base because his sourcing should be good. It, it's not enough when we wish a farmer well, but we do not give him or her the necessary infrastructure to earn very well. So for me, uh, my focus really is that if I can have these middle groups, the aggregators, the shippers, the distributors in my ecosystem, then I can now force the standard, the way you see Dr. Chui will come here to give certificates to companies trained. Then this farmer will know that if my avocados, has of avocados, I got a loan for to do, if I plant this seedling without certification and a standard and I look after it, I will not get a good price at the end. Because I come from a farm, I'm a child of a peasant, we always saw one cow you sell, you see houses and cars and school fees for one cow. But it's just a cow you're raising for 18 months. It cannot do everything for you. You have to invest in that cow in order for it to give you. So the farmers, my sister, we have to strengthen education, both at leadership level and farmers, and really come to them with a value proposition that, because now we've given them parish government model, if they increase production of vanilla and someone is not processing, squeezing vanilla, they will leave vanilla and go to something else. Tomorrow we will say maize, and then they leave maize if the price goes down. So me, I'm encouraging what you call um, uh, consortiums. Because when I am in my area, okay, at least in my area, people are a majority are in dairy products. So Moses Garanga has a brand, because he collects milk from that area. Uh, the, the Indian gentleman at, in Barara, ourselves, at least there's raw material in one place. But in some places in Uganda, you in the East, for example, if you go to Kedea, you go to Paris, I go to Kumi, I will have cassava, another one will have pineapples, another one will have some matoke, a little, matoke not too much, another one will have two cows, another one will have simsim, what is the product you want to scale on so you can bring labs attached to that? So you can bring processors attached to that? So you can bring infrastructure attached to that? It's good to have many things so that you have food security at home, but it's important that we all agree as the, dist the, the districts that fall in, um, in Mukedi, six of them, and say this is our core product for which we can make noise about infrastructure, labs, publicity. We don't have that. Everyone does something in a small way expecting a high price. Consortiums will help us because he will fund a consortium, not an individual. He will process from the consortium, not one type of vanilla farmer who may not have all it takes. I have take a lot of time on this question. Then, so the middlemen, they were Kayun Girisi. Now you, we have to work together to make this fund completely run differently. That's why we are asking you, if I have a JP Morgan team, who knows JP Morgan and Credit Suisse in Uganda? It's not there. I asked the governor of the Bank of Uganda whether they have instruments they trade in with Credit Suisse. They said, not just, we don't have a relationship. In other words, the country doesn't know about Credit Suisse. But that's how Elon Musk raises money to invest in cars of the future. That's how all these technologies you see in the US are done. It is not through commercial banks. Now, when this fund is established, the structure and the process of how you arrive at that fund we, and how it performs, we need to work together bring in ideas on how it can be done to satisfy various needs. Remember, a man selling fruits, for example, Jakana, she may not have the same needs as the person selling milk, or as Tindia was selling beef. The products must be structured to satisfy sectors. 
uh, unsatisfied markets. So the market of Congo, which runs on the policies of some country in Europe, and they get a uh, president, they will demand a standard of president, yet they don't have a product on their own. So it's not them speaking, there's someone who's speaking behind them to stop you coming on that market. So we have to create products under this fund that are responsive to the needs of, of, of Agnes, as well as Babu as an example, and ensure that that works. So those who are you need is they better have wisdom and knowledge. Because there's no people here and here. There's no that uh, pretense of politics. Because if we do, we will lose these partners. Uh, that's why we want to do this. So we have gone to PSSD, Attorney General, so, so that we can construct something that the people can take. Huh? Let me go to the second question. I've taken a lot of time. Audrey, Audrey, who has almost a name like mine, huh? my sister. Uh, you are happy with the Agnes is doing this. I agree with you. Often money is a major excuse for us. Because there's some money in Uganda for exporters. I am sure if I, there's money in PSFU, there's money in uh, microfinance support center, there's money. It's in many places, but it's not organized to answer the needs of an exporter. But even when you have money, have you solved other constraints to do with capacity, to do with certification, to do with sourcing? Almost in Uganda, you have to drive on the road which you are still making. It's like how we drive. You drive your car, the one in front, the one behind, and two border borders on the side. For you to stay safe, well, you have to be a driver of all those, even if you are not in them. We have to make sure that we create that necessary capabilities and capacity in each of the sectors because the money can be there and it's not utilized yeah? or it is abused. Yeah? Daniel, would you invest TFF money in ideas? Absolutely, absolutely. So think of uh, Dr. Dachi Ngugwe's study she did in 2012 on how to increase production of grasshoppers and commercialize them in the West because EU has now passed the law on its menu that they will eat crickets and maggots. They call them mealworms. They are thinking ahead because if climate change destroys all of us, what products will you carry to another planet? But they are also thinking of health and fitness. Now, those mealworms are safer than beef, so to say. So, but Nanchinga, will tell you that the biggest producers of grasshoppers are Uganda, followed by Cameroon, followed by DRC, but, and Zambia, but they are also the largest consumers of grasshoppers. Grasshoppers are healthy, it's a very healthy product. Yeah? You use its own oil to cook it. You can pack it and package it and brand it yeah? and add it on the menu of those Europeans. Yeah? But that research is in Makerere. So I agree with you, my brother Daniel. Part of what this fund should do is a product on, on R&D for market-ready products. So you can see we need a lot of help on that fund. Uh, the management and structure and understanding of the needs is so immense that you will be everywhere and nowhere if you don't have good people who are doing a, a good thing. So structure and performance of the fund will help us. Muhunde is Muhunde, who looks like Dr. Gunda's children. When I saw him, I almost said, I have seen this man somewhere. Uh, uh, I agree with you. You see, the, the diaspora for me, this is the first time I am speaking to the diaspora of America. I, I keep seeing Yuna and all the battles they do. I have been encouraged by the outgoing president of Yuna because She's focused on the area I'm interested in, trade, export, jobs, enterprises. Yeah? Uh, but the thing I see with a lot of people in the diaspora, and maybe it comes from our culture, is the assumption that someone should make the bed and the house and the structure for you, 
and then you come and say, now I'm proud about being Ugandan. It's not right, huh? I think there's such a thing called organization. Organization is the hinge on which everything turns. It's not how much gold you have underground and oil. It's the quality of your people. It's the quality of education. It's the attitude of your public service. It is the push and pull of your diaspora. So if they are organized very well, me, I think that you are the first candidates for all these things. You are the one who knows these markets very well. You are the one with innovations and tools that are not funded often here because you, maybe you are not yet an American with a green card. If this fund is working very well, you should take money from it and supply the market. Where is Andrew? Andrew Bananas. Eh? Ah, Andrew and the banana people are there. They have certified different products from bananas, from flowers, this is red, uh, all that. Now, we call it an ethnic product. I don't think it's an ethnic product. It's a gluten-free product. It's an alternative to wheat. People are dying on wheat. You have 10 million metric tons annually uh, that we have produced, but their, their processing capacity is like one ton a month. You need to invest in that and expand the production, but also change the packaging and branding, because I've seen Wogo from Peru eaten in Brazil, eaten here, branded very well, nicely, but have tested it. It's not uh, the cassava I grew up eating in Barara, in Tungamo, in, uh, we have a word in Runyankore, good Mogo, they say Nevkumuka, you don't understand these languages, they are much deeper. Uh, I see Wakuma cringing, eh? It means that it's cassava of a different taste, yeah? Just like pineapples are of a different taste. Just like the bananas, we have 52 different types of species of bananas in one country. If I tell you, you know, very old, I know all of them, Ruteru, Ju, Ejagata, Yamburu. I grew up on these things, eh? But we are killing them because they don't have the diaspora people understanding and marketing them. Excuse me. I think. Can I comment on that, please? Let me just finish. This is my last Jalia. Jalia, I think, was talking about the, the negativity. Do I have to say much on this? I think everyone is interested in positivity. But positivity is worked for. You work hard at it. First yourself to say, I'm going to remain positive regardless of what's said and done. I'm also going to defy circumstances and conditions and, and say, but this is important. I prioritize what I say and how I say it. I say things with intention, not idle talk. You know, you can possibly say, no more idle talk. You're trying to get me to say this, I'm not interested. I want to know the price of Matoke, global and in Kampala. Do you have that information? If you don't disappear from me, don't tell me other things. Huh? Yep, that's it. Huh? That's those questions I will ask. Okay, we take another 